Okay, let's go. We're in the middle of Kofsadi. In the middle of Kofsadi, we have our salted nuts ready <laughs> for, all those, for all those who know. Okay, so um, we already learned Sif, Alf, Duane, Sif, Kofsadi. We basically concluded last week with the basic Yisoyed of Ksamim. We spoke about whether it's Loy Gazru or whether you have to be Tayla. We brought the Rayas of the Ksam Seifer to Loy Gazru and we explained how it actually makes sense that it's not a loy gazru without a brain, which it could be. We've all learned enough Gemaras in our life to appreciate that there's something called loy gazru, because loy gazru is, is a gazera, and a gazera is not made on this, it's not, I, it makes no sense, there's no such thing, it's a dindraba. That's, but we explained with the Chassam Sefer, and again, I'm just gonna say it quickly again, and uh, I, I mocked him again, if, if you don't understand, stop me, stop me, stop me. I, I, I try to explain as best as I can, but there's no worse, no worse pain in this world than sitting there and like, I have no clue what he's talking about. So just, just stop me and we'll explain more. Well, I'll try, I'll try to understand. Could be I can't. But uh, sometimes it's just a lack of communication. So, the Chassam Sefer taught us that it's Lloyd Gazru. Why? Because Bizman Chazal, the creation of Ksamim, the creation of Ksamim was based on Tom of Etaira. Again, I'm just, this might be a stupid simple for two minutes, but for, for you know, because. A few people said that they didn't fully understand, for everyone will say it again. And if you understand that, I'll just chazar for, uh, I'll try to keep it three minutes or less. The Tum of Etaira, what is Tum of Etaira? Tum of Etaira is like, based on Mikdash, Kayhani, you're Tameh, you touch your coffee, it's Tameh, now the Kayin can drink it, and you were supposed to only drink things with Etaira. All those who are proficient in Allah's Tum of Etaira, like those Dani Psachim, obviously, you know, will give a shir, uh, will have the private Chabura, Mir Tzashem, on uh, Tum of Etaira. But, um, for the rest of us, it just means that you're Tomei and you impart the Tomei to something else. Obviously, this man is that we're all Tomei, we're all Tomei. It's true before the uh, um, high holidays, we'll go to the Mikvah, as well as the Yom and the, the Shal Shregalim. As everyone knows, it's not just in, in uh, the high holidays. But even that might not work, because we're not going to make with the rice so often, and we're not doing Khafifa, even know what that means. But Lamaisa, we're doing the best we can do. So that's what Tomo Betaira means. That means that the Ksamim was geyser for Tom of Atayr. What does that mean? That means Xira had nothing to do with husbands and wives. Had to do with the fact that when a woman sees Dam, when a woman sees Dam, a Kasem, she sees a large stain, she is Tome that what? If she touches her cup of coffee, or she touches her apple, or she touches some, she sits on her bed, these entities will become Tome that they will transmit to all within the rules of Tome of Atayra, Rishon, Shani, etc., etc. Says the Chassam Seifer, because the Gezerah was made at a time of Tome of Atayra, they then extended it Labayla. Why? Why? Why don't they just say it's a dinner only Lutairis? Says the Chassam Seifer, because if not, it would have been Kechucha Utluya Lashon of the Gemara. It would have been a joke. Imagine, let's just play out the scenario. A woman sees a large castle. So she goes to the Rav, and the Rav says, Your Tomei Tomas Ksam. She says, Okay, what does that mean? That means what I touch becomes Tomei. But can I be with my husband? Yes. That's a joke. People are, what in the world? Your husband and wife are together. She's Tomas Nida with regard to Tomei Vitaira, not with regard to her husband. Therefore, they said not only is there Tomei Vitaira for Tyrus, it's also Levaila. Says the Chassam Seifer, because that was the entire invention and creation of the Takana, the rules are governed by that which was existent at the time of the Takana. And since at the time of the Takana there were bugs, and there were bloody sheets, and there were all these other things to be tied on, therefore we can continue saying your tar even though anyone can go look at their bed sheet tonight and there's no but there's no what was lashon of price game ain mita what's lashon uh you know i don't believe and i hope that doesn't apply to any of our beds that is the chsam safer and that gives us a bit of a havan a bit of an understanding into this loy gazu okay well the maisa it's loy gazu what size? How big? Question number one. Before I give the sizes, two words of caution. Word of caution number one, always check. Always check. What I mean, you look at a pair of underwear, and you say, wow, that's a massive stain. That's a massive stain. Uh, she must be dummy. 
or she says, yeah, I said, Lord, in my underwear. And yeah, it makes sense that, it, you know, I'm, I'm going to be tummy now, and I'm tummy. And you're like, oh, okay, you know, makes sense. And move on. That massive stain in the world of Allah might not be so massive. Because what is a sheer grit? So the, the basic, I'm going to give you the four basic shitas. Really, you only have to know one of them. But the four basic shitas are Chayim Nas is 14 millimeters. The Chazayinish says 18 millimeters. Ramosha says 19 millimeters. And Agoyin Rabbi Sol Yaakov Fisher says 20, 21 millimeters. 21 or 24? Wow. Sol Yaakov Fisher says 21 millimeters. Lemaisa Kimat no one is make a like uh, Rabbi Sol Yaakov Fisher. The dying in Yushalayim. Kemat. Kemat. No one is made like it. Rather, the Psak Mikubal is either like Ramosha or like the Chazonish, which is 18, 19 millimeters. For all those that know pennies, an American penny is 19 millimeters. So how do you measure a penny on the pair of underwear? So you, you could put it next to each other. It's not so simple. So this is like a... This is not like a... This is just a... I thought one of the English books wrote this, and it's very simple. Take the penny, put it behind the baggage, and wrap it around. So now you can see, does the stain cover over the whole penny? Everyone understand what I just said? Yeah, this, is, this is like, no, 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 those are pulling like crazy. Anyone have a coin now? Anyone have a coin? I know you have a coin. Anyone have, have a coin? Oh, why do you put it on top? Because then, then you're only going to know, first of all, because, very good. Let's explain why you want to put it on top. The answer to that question is, is as you all started seeing in Sifiyod, when it comes to colors, we're only, I don't want to tell you the Psaq but we're generally going to only be worried about the red part. So if you have a, a stain, which is part red and part not red, and whatever, just putting it on top is not necessarily going to help you to see what's what and who's who. Whereas when it's behind and you wrap it around, you can get a firm uh, grasp as to the size. Now, you're still going to say, but wait, well, what if it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long, narrow shape? It's not going to help, which is true. That's when you go to Rav. And Rabbanim, after playing with enough uh, summon, are, you know, could figure it out. And they actually make, maybe I'll bring one in, they make a, a card, a lucite card, which uh, it, it's, you both can do it yourself with a ruler, that they basically figured out the area of 19 millimeters in all different shapes. And then you could take the card and put it on top, and you could gauge exactly the size. But the important Nikuta that we're bringing out here today is that now, if you've ever went to Rav and he pulled out like a quarter, you know, like, maybe I shouldn't be asking Chiles anymore. Okay. So the answer, maybe we should. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Or maybe we should like put up signs again and like, what's he doing? So the answer is, it's for reference. All it is is for reference. You can't tell size without something to reference it to. So uh, some, I, I, one Rob, I remember it was a, uh, what's the, the, the shekel, what's the coin they used to have? The half shekel, half shekel coin, half shekel coin. They used to still have it, right? Yeah, yeah still, have it. still have it, of course, obviously, it's only been three months. <laughs> they still have a half shekel coin. So the half shekel coin is, uh, is very big, it's massive, it's absolutely massive. So he pulls out a half shekel coin and, and he sees my face like, what in the world am I doing? So he explained to me, no, it's just for reference. When you see it next to something else, so, so a penny also a penny and a half shekel. No, no, he didn't have. It. All he had in him was a half shekel coin. So it's using it as reference. It's the size is a penny. I'm just saying you need to try to figure out ways sometimes to figure out how big, how big it is. Okay, that's the size. That's very clear. And let's move on. Good. Now here's the million dollar shekel. What's the question? So what's it called? It's smaller than a half shekel. If you it, it, it's in your own brain. In your brain, if you know. This Rav knows how big a half shekel is. So he's able to use that as a reference point next to the stain. Without it, just by looking at the stain, it's very difficult. Sometimes someone might be able to say, you know, I'll use a pen and I could just, you know, you never measured something with something random just as a reference point. That's all it is. I'm just, all I'm just pointing out is if you see someone using a random coin, don't think he's being nagel because he's not. He's just using it as a reference point. Okay, right. Um, I mentioned that it's only the red that we're going to see more in Sefiyot, which I love already is knee deep in, and Mirza Shem will talk about more in the next day or so um, what the story is. So the million dollar shayla is, so Lamaisa, there is a pair of white underwear, and there's a splotch of blood, and it's perfectly red, and it's Pachas Miki Gris, and we just said that she is... One more time. Tar. It's perfect. Very good. Tar. It wasn't a trick question. That she is Tar. Very good. That she is tar. But the question is, 
Is there anything that has to be done right now? A lot of the, the, the latter achrayna, we should call it, um, ask the question as follows it's the way that the Sheba the Levi is Mazbir. It's a reza. It's a reza. What's a reza? She's talking. If I see a dot of blood, very good, and we just explained in the world of Ksamim like Gazru, but what well, we know something's going on inside there because we see a dot of blood on her underwear. And we know that it didn't come from above. So it's true, she's tar, because the, the rules of Ksamim go back, Bismat Chazal, but Lamaisa, we have a race of the funny. What do we do? Is it possible that the blood came from like, like dry blood or something like that? Or there's other questions that's not actually if, not it, blood? It, it, I'm saying, it, if there is, there is, if there isn't, there isn't. I'm saying that that's, that's a balvatish. But if, if, if we look at a period, the, the question is, often you know very clearly this is what it is. It's, it's very simple. It's not ketchup and it's not makeup and it's not anything else. And it's clearly blood and she doesn't have any cut. And it came in a pair of underwear and she put it on clean, you know, all the, all the things. So she's tar, 100% tar. No one say, no, she's tar. We explained why she's tar. The question is, but there's a race. What do we do? This, and this is the reason why, which we mentioned this all the way back in day one, that Ravel Yashiv famously says she should do a bedika. Why is she doing a bedika? Now we can understand it. I think we understand the full gamut. She is tar. In the rules of Ksamim, like Gazu, she's tar. Why? Because Bizman Chazal, there could have been a bug, and what they made the rules, they built into the rules, and that's Kula. But Lamaisa, we're looking at a woman here that we're not sure what's going on. Similar, you have, not similar at all, but just a terrible Dimian, you have that fork that might have become tree. What do you do with that fork? So you cash it. So you have a woman that she might have an issue. She's not Tommy. What do you do with that? So this is where Rabbi Yashif famously said, it's brought down the Zidra Marek which I don't know why we don't have. That is, um, it's Rabbi Rubin from Harnof, and it's one of the, one of the very, very famous uh, kids from Svar, Menof Nida, as well as others. Uh, the Chachani and the Sheva Levi say similarly that she should do a Bedika. I told the Eilam here that I heard from Rav Asher Weiss, that he said, You have to run away from an Avera to do a Bedika. At the time, after this year, many of the Eilam here asked a, a very, very good question. We have a reisa, great. Have a rot min avera, great. <laughs> Who says to do a bedika? Who says to do a bedika? That's a very good question. And this is what uh, uh, many of the contemporary boys came to ask, that why do a bedika? Because we all know what's going to happen when we do that bedika. What else should we do? Oh, what else should be done? Good. What else should be done? So I'm going to give you multiple options what else should be done. So number one is abstain. Do nothing. What? Right. She's still, what's that? What's that? Let me explain. What's that? Let me explain. She's tar, because there's no sun. So now, how long does this reis last for? So now let's 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 first of all. So some that want to go into the gemara and they blame this on not blame. They, they see this b'shem ramayisha. I don't know. I, I don't know if they tell me the b'shem ramayisha. I've written down b'shem ramayisha. I have no clue where this comes from. But we'll just say it's gemara. The gemara says that the the rechem holds down b'sachitzayin is maimid down for chof talit shoyis. The Gemara, I think you already all saw that the dam could fall into the base of Chitzah and it doesn't come out of the body. And for 24 hours, we could assume that's what it is. So someone is say, based off of this, that if there's ever a time in which she sees a dot of blood, again, she's perfectly tar, but we have a raisa. How long is the raisa for? 24 hours. 24 hours. Oh, the raisa just says, don't, don't be mishamish. Because what does the raisa tell us? It tells us, wait, if there's one dot, there might be another dot. So it's true that that dot right now doesn't bother us because we don't know about it. But maybe there's going to be a Shamish and there's going to come out, there's going to be a Dom, Bems, a Dashmish right after Dashmish on his Eber, all the millions of issues that could happen. So abstain. And how long abstain? Maybe abstain for 24 hours because that's when the Dom is held over there. And then you don't have any Reza. That's one way. I heard from. Uh, okay. Yeah? Are we, what, are we talking about um, call it underwear or underwear? Same thing. I'm getting in. The case I gave was the easiest case. It's one dot. Less than a less than a gris on white. So that's the easiest case because we know it's blood. Once we start getting to color, we have to figure out do you know it's that, but it's the same thing. You're right. How do you know it's blood? I mean, no, where's white though? When's it happening? Oh, they're in the, oh, when's they have to be together? Like wearing white. Also, first of all, maybe it was on the bed. It was on the white bed sheets, or it was on. Uh, yeah, it, good. No, you're, you're right. In, yeah, good. He, Rabbi Katzman is correct. In the Balabatish, this would be more negaya on a pair of color underwear. But I, I don't want to talk about that because we don't want to talk about color underwear. Yeah, but he's right. Let, let's just go with like a, a light color that like you're sure that it's red. 
which is in the Mitzvahs maybe true, but she's tar because, as we explained, like the Azur. And now, let's move on. I was just using a case that fits easier in the Sigil where we're holding. So someone is saying 24 hours. The Machmir, we said, said to Abedika. Someone is saying the following Eitza, I, I never, uh, this was, I, I heard this machine contemporary place, so I don't want to say any names and faces because I never spoke to them myself. It's an interesting idea. We all know that if you do a Kinua, what is a Kinua? In the Lashon, a place in means she just wipes herself. If she wipes herself, we already started mentioning that she'll never really be Tommy, right? Correct? Correct. But she'll know at least what's going on if she wipes herself. Because if there's blood down there, like she'll wipe and she'll, she'll find more blood, maybe. So somebody's going to want to suggest, let her wipe herself with a colored garment, not do a proper badika. Because again, if you do a proper badika, but if she just wipes herself with a colored garment, that's a shoe. A uh, tissue, tissue's fine also. A colored, a colored something, the Nikuta I'm bringing out is that it's colored. Then you'll at least ascertain at some level, is there more dam floating around? Will that necessarily tell you about if there's dam upstairs? Not necessarily. So what do you do? Really, in reality, so what is, do you gain by that? What do you gain is you know right now if there's a bigger issue, mamish right here. You still can. Oh, oh, so now the big question is, but well, I said they allowed to be together. So now, this is a difficult question to answer. Because in text, is there any reason that they're not allowed to be together? No. So I'm like Gazer. They're tar, they can be together. However, need to creases. And what's going to happen if I'm the Dashmish, there's that. That's cards. And as we're going to eventually get to the Sigya, is that called Amazed? Is that called a Shoygig? Is that not Amazed? Is it a Shoygig? Is it a Shoygig card, Amazed? Maybe the Reyesa is enough to tell you. You know, be a little careful over here. Take it easy. So this is this is where the contemporary psak is. Use your brain, and usually it's the rub uses his brain because his brain is sometimes more in tune without Nigias than the shayel's brain. And therefore, depending on this day, sometimes if it's one dot and it's nine o'clock in the morning, the rub will say, "Okay, by tonight you'll be fine." Be in touch. Let me know if you see something else. Sometimes if it's a larger stain, Rob will say, let's wait till tomorrow. There's no clear guideline. Again, the one slight marmakum is they say, Bashim Ramayisha, 24 hours. But even that is, is, is difficult. It's to the minute, to this. You just saw it now. It didn't just come out now. That is the basic sigya of, of uh, whether she would have to be And I mentioned again, which I think I already mentioned, the Ramayisha, is that is this called the Reyes HaShe'ev Shalavure? The answer Ramayisha says is no. Because even if you do a Badika, and even if you find Dam, why are you being Machmir? Mitayr is Vada and Mitayr is Safik. Says Ramayisha, you're going to end up being Machmir and Misafik. Why is it Safik? I saw Dam. No. Because we don't know what Dam is Dam. We know that the Gemara said there's only five Dam types of Dam. We're then Machmir and everything is a night to Lad Nimas. So Ramayisha in the Tshuva says, and this is the reason why Ramayisha has a klal, and all the bites can come out and get his klal, that we don't do excessive bedikas. Aside for the reasons that we all know that women scratch themselves and women nowadays are more dry down there, etc., etc. What's wrong? Every bedikas that has darbana. No, 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 no. Why is it ever going to be? Every bedikas is still going to be a subject of raisa, but anytime you're going to have to be machmer on the color, is going to be due to a lack of idea. But it's still going to be that you're going to have a subject of on the table. Just it's not going to be within the rules of Efshel Rure Bivadais. Bivadais. It's not going to get rid of that it, it's still a Chaymar of a Daraisa. But Haguf was why Ramayish is saying, don't do it. Because you're going to put yourself in a Daraisa that you're going to have to be made. Okay. Very good. Let's move on. If you do it again, it's clean and you can be together. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's, for sure. That's absolutely for sure. And again, there's no, there's no clear answer. This is more of a, of a feeling that the Rav is going to get. And often, as we're going to keep on explaining, there's more to the story. There's more to the story. Often, the Rav is going to say, does a woman think she's having her period right now? Does she feel her period coming? Not that her gosh of feelings. No. So she feels stomach cramps and this and that. And if she says yes, oh yeah, it happens to be 20, 20 of the month. Oh, shkayaf. Now we understand what's going on over here. It's day 31 of the month. I understand what's going on over here. So often, the story around it will dictate what's going on. And that's going to determine, again, only proper Tashmas. So let's be very, very clear. She is mother, she is tar, and Chib of Venetia gets, we're going to learn a whole Sigga is mother, and it's nothing, it's not like a day of a vest and all these other things. The one thing is, they can't be together because we're concerned that it might result in that. Are we clear? We are. Yes. Let's move on. Okay, give up. Let's move on 
to uh, just a sidebar, an interesting uh, food for thought for everyone. Um, would she be allowed? Lafi the machmirim. I don't want to get involved. Gishmak Ashela. If she's going to be machmir, does she make a bracha on the mikvah? This time, this has to do with. It's one of those things. I just, I just want to point this out. Often, if you're going to be looking up a lot of the tshuva, a lot of the kisses for him, everything is always going to end off with. Okay, machmir mikvah. Okay, so now she's going to go to the mikvah eventually. Wait, did she make a bracha? Is this a real tefillah? Could she make a bracha? Okay, just something, something to keep in mind. There's a Shiva lady about, uh, about this. Shiva lady says, you could be machmir and say that you're telling me if you see one down of blood, but so the Shiva lady, don't make a bracha on the mikvah. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's not get involved in this. Just one slight dot. We all spoke about Kesem al-Basara. We all spoke about Kesem al-Basara. And one thing we want to mention is that even though the shach is machmir, which many of you uh, mentioned, that, you know, we keep on saying that the shach is usually psychological, but the shach is machmir, that what? One dot on your body is, Tommy, like the shita of the Rambam, very good. I'll add on, it's not just the shach, it's our shulchan, it's the lechem simla, and it's the shevet alivi. They're all machmir, one dot of blood on the body is, Tommy. Lemaisa, the chachmas adam, ramaisha, are Mekel, or Eliashev was masked in Mahakel, and seemingly the reason is because some some in Shem Mahakel, but I, I, I just add on, even the Fidim Achmirim, when we say al Bizarra, you all started seeing the Gemara, it has to be somewhere that makes sense. She has a dot of blood in her ear, that, that's impossible. I don't care what acrobatic she's doing, that's the Gemara that you saw. Maybe if she's doing a flip, then the blood could have flown to wherever. It means somewhere within the the direct line site of Isimakum that the blood could have fallen from, and uh, that just makes things a little bit clear. Um Ramesh is Makel? Ramesh is Makel, yes. Is it a star? Of course, they've got 100 percent That there's no sheet that doesn't say it's not Mitzar. Everyone says Alpha Sar is Mitzar. We're discussing the sheet of the Rambam that said one dot is Tamar. One dot is something. In the first case, the Yisrael and the Yisrael and the Yisrael. Rajvah. I'm saying the Shachar Paskin is there. No, it's Again, the Shach, again, the Shach is being Machmir. One dot is even one dot like the Rambam. Rambam. And Archa Shulchan is Machmir even right. one dot like the Rambam. So the, the, the Chachmas Adam is only being Nekal that one dot is not Tommy. But they were, were being Machmir that it's Mitzvah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that, 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 no, that, 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 Now, now, the next Shachar is. Which, which some of the chavra here picked up on that there's a funny thing going on in the Shulchan Aruch with Yish Aymer. Again, we don't have time to go through the whole, this is an Ian Shtikl Torah and that Shach and what's going on over there, but uh, we, which we saw afterwards, and I don't know why I just didn't look at my notes, I had this written down, apologies, but Yabi Aymer, Chacham Avadia, already is, is Ma'irer that the Yish Aymer in the Shulchan Aruch is, is interesting. It's interesting, it's not a normal Yish Aymer, it's not, this is the way where Avadi learns, not a Stam Yishayim Belach Kistam, it's not a regular Yishayim, the Stam is just quoted in Gemara, the Yishayim is explaining, and we'll leave it at that, and uh, we, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go about that. Just one detail about Kamatim, about Kamatim. Kamatim are pleats, Kamatim are pleats. Let's discuss what's not Kamatim, what's not Kamatim, what do I mean? What if I have two Begadim? If I have two Begadim, and I find this stain on both of them, is there a Tzad that that is Mitztarif? Is there a tzad that your bad luck no. is going to mess you up? No. The answer is no. Now, the question is, why not? Why not? The Chachari speaks this out explicitly, and the Vadi Shulchan as well says the same thing. Very good. The, I say even the Vadi Shulchan, I don't want to be honest. But um, there's no tzad. Now, the, the Pashas, the Raya that there's no tzad is from the, from the Pesach Lechuvah himself. Pesach Lechuvah discusses the case of, please, and he quotes, the Venus Adam is... Mistape, maybe yeah, even when it's sewed. That he says is too far, but not so no be makal. Then he quotes all the machmirim. If there's a tzad on two begadim, he should have said that. So the pashtus is that there is no tzad, and it's not mitzar. Why not? Why not? The, the, the simplest explanation is summon the rice and the rambam. The rice and the rambam, right? We know the against the uh, shtikal terror on this. That uh, rise in the Rambam, Sefer Archas Taira is in my Rambam as well. That it's about the mitzia of the kesem, which th- this is this is an interesting idea that we'll, we'll eventually have to toy with. That it's where you found the kesem, where you found the kesem. So we found it on two different garments. How could it be mitzar? How could it be mitzar? Number one. Number two is you're all in the middle of seeing the pesachet chuvas that discuss uh, 
garments, partially colored garments, partially colored garments. And there the Pesach Tshuvas are very busy, is it Mitzdarif? Again, we don't see anyone that's even bringing up a tzad on Tuba Gadim, Lamaisa, the place of Marmeko, so we can leave it at that. When it comes to Kmatim, um, I think everyone here basically understands the Psaq. There are some that will be Mekel even on a sewn uh, baguette, which, as you all uh, expressed, um, astonishment is a massive chiddish. It's a chiddish, number one, because even the Mekel, the Binas Adam, says Sarah Ian. Sewn so baguette and the dam is on two sides of the. On two sides of the kemet, two sides of the crease, yes. Can you say that? But furthermore, you all brought up that he's. Lashin sounds like that because it's because of the, the air that's going to be uh, in between there. Um, I'll tell you, so yeah, that, that's the Pashas. Pashas is if it's something that not Mako. There are those that want to say a seam. Every seam is in reality the same longest. That basically a seam makes it like two different garments, like two different garments, and they want to be Mako based on that. It's, it's a big kula, it's a very big kula. And uh, we're just going to leave it at that. It's a very big kula. Now, a classical case of kamatin, which no one here thought about, because maybe it's not so normal, but is a zipper. A zipper. A zipper, well, chayro would be a very good application of kamatin. Because whatever the hector is, whether we understand it or not, the basic long is it could have opened. Could have opened. So now that it's folded, because it could have opened, even though it looks right now, everything's perfect. Well, I don't know, you don't know, maybe it was open, right? So a zipper is the same thing. A zipper is the same thing. If you have a zipper that could, the two pieces could come separate. So even if right now they look the same, the pastas is that you'd be able to view it uh, separate. And I'll just add in, based on the singular middle of learning, a zipper is also what color? Usually silver. And usually you see the zipper. So that would be another reason that it would split up the cast into two parts. The only time this would really be Nagi is you have one of those fancy zippers that the material touches each other and the zipper is hidden underneath. That would be a potential case, and that would actually probably be the only case that might be Nagi, which would maybe a zipper on a, on a bed sheet, a, a, a quilt cover could have a zipper on it, pillowcases could have zippers on it, and that would be a potential case. That's why it didn't happen, and Lamaisa Shaimim Lahaka. We're, we're going to conclude, and I'm just going to throw out the Shailas that you're going to now encounter with Insef Yod. And then after we see all the literature, we'll go more um, Kisidra Allah. Um, a lot of, I'm just basically saying now everything that, that you're in the middle of looking at. We're going to have to discuss is paper Makabal Tama, number one, is paper Makabal Tama, which would be toilet paper and tissues. And whether it is or it isn't is going to determine. Um, should she be looking at her toilet paper, which I think we already mentioned uh, at a point. Pads, pads, are pads makabal tamar or not? That's going to be a very large uh, discussion as well. What color is color? What color is color? Toilets, toilets, I think you all saw the Thomas Nigoyim. Thomas Nigoyim, I don't know if you saw Teresa that maybe wants to say that um, it's totally in Eretz Yisrael. So a toilet in Eretz Yisrael, maybe that should be makabal tamar. Again, it's only going to be a white toilet. It's only going to be a white toilet. Um, I'll be bashed this. Um, furthermore, I'll just give you the, the secret is that there's a Shofnar Harab that says it has to be made out of wood. It's only when houses are made out of wood, he learns in Tum of Ataira, that's when the Merkav of Tumas and Okay, I'll just say it, this is Kishmak. If the Teresa Shalom says the only time it's Negeya is in Eretz Yisrael, and the grass says that's made of wood, are, are houses made out of wood in Eretz Yisrael? The answer is no. So it's Kishmak. If it would have potentially been again in America, so then if you have a custom on your white wall, it's a good Shiloh because your, your walls are, there is one of them, okay, on the wall itself, the she rack and one out of the other. Well, uh, we'll get to the toilet in a moment, but, but the, we have to figure out is there any toes to the gun? So there's toes to someone that says Dolly and Eretz Israel. We're just pointing out that the grass says it's only when the house is made out of wood. That is a Shulchan Aruch Harab. Where is that uh, Shulchan Aruch Harab? If I can find it quickly, I'll tell you. If not, I can tell you afterwards. I can't find it quickly. I the can gra- write down. This is the grass. The grass. Shulchan Aruch Harab. The grass. Um, I can't find it right now, so we'll leave that for the moment. Uh, I have it right here. I do have it. In Sif Chav Beis. It's right over here in Sif in Kuf Sav in Sif Chav Beis. And he says that how only a house that's built out of wood has Thomas Negayim. He's obviously in the city of Thomas Negayim, and that's what he holds. So therefore, it's another reason why Potentially will not be Negea. Um, and let's and let's uh, let's leave that. And the last thing you have to keep in mind is that even 
Actually, I'll just ask it as a shayla. Even if the, the undergarment is colored, what about if there's a white area that the blood falls on? Meaning, meaning, um, the bed sheets. The bed sheets. Let's say even if she's sleeping in underwear, and therefore the blood is on her underwear, but it seeped through onto the sheet. How do you view that kesem? Is that a kesem al tsev'oinim? Or is that a kesem al levanim? Massive nafkimina. And as I mentioned to many of you already, is tights. Very often tights have a padding on the bottom that is white. That is white. And that's going to be the same shayla. If it seeps through and it's sitting on the white, what do we, what do, we do with that? Right. And obviously all the, all the conditions that it would be. But meaning, as we're learning all the conditions of Ksamin, so one hector is going to be uh, uh, it's great. So now if it's more than a grist, you don't have that hector. Now the next hector is going to be Tzavayim, color. Now the question is, what's colored? And now what if it's on two parts of the colored? You already saw um, on the different parts of the colored, of the colored splotch, of the colored splotch. And, and with that, I will just mention as well that one has to keep in mind that not every pair of colored underwear has a colored lining. It just sound when you learn the sig is one of those things that you keep in your mind. The fact that the underwear is blue doesn't mean often the lining is white. Why that's done, I don't know. I don't make underwear, but well, mice, that's something to keep in mind that, you know, don't look at the outside of a pair of underwear and say, oh, it's blue, you know, it's not a shed. No, you have to actually look and see where the stain is, which is similar to the first cousin that you don't see in the Pesli Chuba of where the stain actually falls.